Welcome to this video. Well, this video is trying to show you uh, show you around on what is meant by microscopic world. Well, in microscopic world, there are several uh, important attractions, uh, and one of the very important and major attraction is called ionic bond. Ionic bond itself is a very 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 strong force. Okay, but before we talk about ionic bond, then let's talk about what is actually the particles that are making up the ionic bond? When we talk about a particle, actually, there in the in the world we can classify the things uh, into I mean all the particles into main, uh, three main types. The first one is called atom. Well, atom, I think we are all very familiar with it, okay? Because atom itself got a neutral in charge, okay? And you can always refer to a sodium atom. Okay, sodium atom got 11 protons and 11 electrons on its outermost shells. So when you add that up, okay, the uh, overall charge of the protons and electrons become zero. So atoms always refers to some neutral charge, uh, neutral uh, particles. But for some of the particles, they are charged, and they are called ions. Another example of ion is still, let's you, uh, stick with sodium. Sodium itself got totally to, uh, 11 protons, but in this case, uh, due to some reasons, and the electron is lost, then totally there are to, uh, 11, 10 electrons. So when you have 11 protons and 10 electrons, when you sum it up together, the number of charge become positive 1. That's why you can see a positive charge symbol is on the upper right-hand corner. So ions always refers to some charged particles. The last one. This one is also very interesting. This one is called molecule. This one is even more common and when we refer to any kinds of substance that we don't know, okay, and if they can give us a certain property, then we refer them to be a uh, molecule. But actually molecules itself is uh, uh we define it very carefully in chemistry. So molecules is another type of neutral particles that exist in our uh, in the chemistry world. So uh, we will talk about uh, we will talk about molecule more in the later parts. Well, let's look at what is meant by ion. Ion, just like what we've mentioned, is a charged particle. The charged particle comes from a neutral atom. When a neutral atom loses electron, then it becomes a charged particle which uh, has a positively charged. So we call it cation. Cation. Okay. So just like this little cat. And when a neutral atom gain an electron and become negatively charged, okay, then this one is called N ion. N means, uh, well, sometimes it refers to N, it refers to a single, okay? So when somebody got negatively charged electrons, I mean, some atom got negatively charged electron, it become unhappy. So, so negative. So this one become what we call the N ion. N ion. So how are these ions are formed? So let's take sodium atom as an example again. According to our calculation, there are totally 11 protons and 11 electrons. So when we do um, math, okay, in terms of charge, it adds up to become zero, or sometimes we call it neutral in charge, neutral in charge, okay? But let's look at this sodium atom. These last electrons, that means uh, uh, electrons on this outermost shell, actually is quite far away from the nucleus as a center. So these electrons can be lost quite easily. And there's another intention or another uh, reason why the sodium uh, atom would like to lose electrons. Because when the sodium atom loses one, uh, loses one electron, when we look at the second electron shell, it becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight electrons. That means for a second electron shell, it becomes fully occupied. Okay, that means all the electron shells it left are fully occupied. That means it is very relatively more stable. That's why sodium atom would like to lose one electron and become sodium uh, ion in this case. Okay, and when an electron is lost, we usually use a bracket to represent this electron diagram, okay? And uh, when we do the calculation, 
11 protons positive charge and 10 electrons negatively charged. When they sum it up together, it becomes a positive one. So in this electron diagram, we always have to put a positive charge here. A positive charge to represent that one electron is lost. So after losing one electron, this sodium ion got totally eight electrons on this outermost shell, which is fully occupied. So sodium ion is now happy. That's why we could uh, have a symbol of Na positive, Na positive, representing sodium ion, sodium ion. Or if we write it, write its name, or we're doing communication with each other, we simply call it sodium ion, sodium ion. We don't have to put another name, give another name to it, or simply make use of its own name together with uh, putting ion, ion at the back. Remember, these two are separate words. So that's why this one is called sodium ion, sodium ion. Well, let's take another example together. Another example is magnesium. Magnesium itself, according to the ca our calculation, number of protons is 12, number of electrons is 12, negative as well. So when we come to the overall charge, it becomes zero. Again, it is neutral in charge when it is in the atom state. Again, magnesium would like to lose these two electrons so that it can become a noble gas configuration or fully occupied it outermost electron shell. So after losing two electrons, then the outermost shell electrons of magnesium got totally eight electrons, which is fully occupied. Or sometimes we call it, it reached the octet state, octet state. So after losing two electrons, when we do the calculation, 12 protons with, together with 10 electrons, the overall charge now become two positive. So we have to put two positive on the upper right hand corner to represent the charge of this ion. For this small uh, particle we obtained, we simply called it magnesium ion, magnesium ion. So the chemical symbol of the magnesium ion is Mg2+. Okay, again, very similar to the sodium ion. Okay, the name of this ion, we simply make use of its own name, uh, the this name of this atom. And then we put ion, ion at the back to represent that this one is a cation. So to summarize how cation is formed, we can always refer to the following. Well, cation always formed from metal atom. When you see any uh, kind of metal atom, usually they refer to uh, group one, group two metals, or even group three metals. Sometimes we may encounter transition metal ions as well. So, but most of the case, uh, metal form cation. Second point that we have to understand or remember is that for metal atoms, they lose electrons and become cation. Okay, when you lose one electron, then it could become positive one charge. When you lose when you lose this two electron, then this become positive two charge. And the ultimate goal of all these type of atoms is they want to become a noble gas arrangement or noble gas configuration. Just like what we have mentioned, uh, 2, 8, 2, this electron arrangement, they would like to lose two electrons to become noble gas configuration. Okay, or 2, 8, 1, they would like to lose one electron and become noble gas configuration. One last reminder when we are uh, tackling the problem of cation, then we always have to remember when we are drawing the electron diagram of cation, we have to use a square bracket to represent it. Together, we have to write the charge on the upper right-hand corner. So we have discussed how cation could be formed. Then how about anion? The fluorine atom, it has totally seven electrons on uh, its outermost shell. So that's why it's called halogen. So when we look at the diagram, or we look at the uh, number of protons, electrons, and the total charge, you will notice that number of protons of fluorine is 9, okay, number of electrons is 9 minus, so the overall charge is 0, that means, again, it's a neutral atom, okay, so 
for it to obtain a noble gas configuration or a um, more stable configuration, it needs to gain one electron. One electron is gained, okay, and eventually it forms a structure with an extra electron coming from somewhere, okay. Well, actually, we don't really care about where, where does this electron comes from, but anyway, it gained uh, this fluorine atom gained an electron. And eventually, you will notice after gaining electron, when we do the calculation once again, the number of protons of uh, fluorine are still 9, okay? But for the number of electrons now become 10 electrons, okay? Uh, 9 protons, what I meant, okay? Uh, 9 protons and 10 electrons. So the overall charge now become minus 1. So the overall charge become minus 1, again, we because it is an ion then we use a square bracket to represent it as an ion and then we give the charge on the upper right hand corner as well okay so this time is a negative one charge so we put only negative we simply ignore the one uh, to um, uh, prevent that confusion so after all the formula of this ion become f minus the minus representing the uh, total charge of negative one well because this one is a negatively charged ion so we call it an n ion well to make it different from uh the, uh, in terms of naming to make it different from the cat ion we usually change the name at the back the name at the back we change it from fluorine to fluoride fluorine originally is f l U O R I N E, and then we change this I N E into I D E to represent that an electron is gained. So this ion we call it a fluoride ion, fluoride ion. So this is how we uh, how an N ion is formed. Okay, by gaining electron. Well, let's have another example. Another example is still uh another period two elements okay this is oxygen atom so when we do the calculation of ox oxygen atom you notice that we uh, it has eight protons and eight electrons and overall the total charge become zero okay so this is how an oxygen atom looks like but oxygen atom would like to gain two electrons so that it can become a noble gas configuration so it gained two electrons from somewhere and become an anion Again, we draw this electron diagram using two electrons, uh, two different, two other different symbols to represent the extra electrons gained by the uh, atom, and then we use a bracket to represent it. Okay, and we do the mathematics. Okay, and eight proton, eight positive, and ten electron, ten negative. Okay, the overall charge become minus two. So we put two minus on the upper right hand corner to represent this ion as an n ion on oxygen so the chemical symbol of this ion this n ion is o2 minus well let's see whether you can get the name of this uh, ion this time it's no longer uh, oxygen ion okay because if we say oxygen ion it's always representing a cat ion but this time it's an n ion that means uh, gaining two electrons from somewhere so after gaining two electrons this one we call we add an ide at the back of the of the uh, name of that particular element so that's why this ion we call it oxide ion oxide ion okay remember ide okay we put it at the back to represent that only this atom is here and then this atom change into a form of anion so this one is called oxide ion okay, we can summarize in this way anion formation anion always form from non-metal atoms okay like what we have uh, um, discussed uh, oxygen and fluorine and some uh, chlorine aldine so on and so forth okay and then they will, would like to change themselves into a noble gas configuration okay by gaining electron again do remember we have to put a square bracket and then put a charge put their charge on the upper right hand corner when we are drawing the electron diagram of it 